Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. It's boiling hot, but I just got this hot stuff at Jumper today. Like, it finally came. I ordered it like a month ago. I have to wear it, even though it's super, super hot right now, and I'm drinking a coffee, a hot coffee. So that's what I'm wearing right now. I have to be careful as well because I put chocolate on the top of the coffee. So if I do get chocolate on my lips. Let me know. Don't let me continue filming with chocolate on my lips. Anyway, today's video is going to be me reading the books that inspired some of my favourite movies. One of them is literally my favourite movie of all time. The other one is one of my favourite movies of all time. And the other one is a movie that I do love. But I do play a TBR game with my patrons where we pick between books and we do a really fun card game in order to pick that book. And we lost the round for this one. So the third book is, you know, something that I am interested in reading anyway. And I do really, really, really enjoy the film. So it, it's just not really a favourite favourite, if you know what I mean. But I couldn't really put that in the title of this video. Otherwise it would be reading books that inspired some of my favourite films, but one of these books isn't really my favourite film. However, I did lose a game, so then I have to read it anyway. You know, like, that's just a bit too long. <laughs> so the books that I'm reading in this vlog are... Legally Blonde by Amanda Brown. This one is a film that I absolutely love and adore. It stars Reese Witherspoon. The film pretty much defined my early teen life, but I had never read the book before. So Legally Blonde, I'm sure you know what it is, just based on the film. But this follows Elle Woods, who is a pretty big socialite. She is very spoiled, and she has that kind of stereotypical blonde bimbo image. And then her rich boyfriend dumps her, and so she ends up joining Harvard Law School in order to win him back. However, in this book, she goes to Stanford University, not Harvard. I have already read this book. I was actually going to do a reading vlog, just reading this book called Oh My God, You Guys, a Legally Blonde reading vlog. But then I didn't really have enough content for that because I went to see Legally Blonde the musical in London. And yeah, I read the book for Bookopolathon. And I just never posted that vlog because I was like, this is just too short. So I'm going to include the clips of me reading this in this vlog. So I'm not going to tell you what I thought of this yet. You're going to have to watch the clips for it, but that will be the first book read in this vlog. So if you're wondering why things jump all over the place, it's because I read this nearly a month ago now, and I don't want to waste that. Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. Jurassic Park, the film, is, I think, my favourite film of all time. It's either that or Titanic. I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I'm actually going to be watching Titanic with my patrons at the start of July, and I'm really excited. We are tossing to me, leaving my job, and we are going to be watching Titanic drunk. <laughs> so I'm really excited for that. That's coming up. But Jurassic Park, I did just do a Jurassic Park movie watch along with my patrons. Actually, we watched all five Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies leading up to the brand new movie, which I have seen. I have seen Jurassic World Dominion. I was a little disappointed, not gonna lie, but I still love this franchise so much. I've never read the book though that inspired Jurassic Park, which is my favourite film, and I've heard fantastic things about it actually, I'm really excited. I bought the audiobook of this for £3 in an Audible sale years ago, and I totally forgot I had it. So I'm gonna listen to the audiobook of this as well as read along physically. I'm doing some reading spins tonight with Kayla from Books and Lala, for patrons and Kayla's members. So I'm really looking forward to that, so I'll probably start that tonight, or I might start a little bit before then. It is only like 3 p.m. in this like another six hours before then. So I might start it. But yeah, Jurassic Park is essentially set on a tropical island where scientists have managed to bring dinosaurs back to life through DNA and incredible research. And they kind of build like a theme park with these dinosaurs and things go awry. I don't know how much the movie adapted from this book, so I don't know if it has like Alan in it or Ellie or Tim and Lexi, the kids, or you know, all the iconic characters from the movie. I don't know if they're in this and it doesn't say on the back. I'm just excited to find out. I'm really excited to read this one. Like genuinely out of all the books in this vlog, I mean, I've already read Legally Blonde, but like, I'm really excited for this one. <laughs> and then finally, the last book is The Shining by Stephen King. Now, I do really love the movie. I watched it quite young and I thought it was really great. I have tried to read this in the past. I think about three years ago, I got about 50 pages in and I stopped. I can't really remember why. I think I just wasn't reading it at a very good time. So I thought, you know, I want to come back to this when I'm more in the mood for it. But yeah, this one is about a family led by a patriarch who is a writer and they go and live in this hotel. Uh, oh my God, it's been years since I watched the movie. The Overlook Hotel, he becomes a caretaker of it. A blizzard ends up cutting the hotel off from the rest of the world and the main character starts to descend into madness. I haven't watched this movie in so long. I might have to say if my patrons want to watch it with me. And I am looking forward to reading it. I haven't read a Stephen King book since 
Oh my God, what was the last Stephen King book I read? It might be like nearly a year and a half since the last time I read a Stephen King book. And I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with Stephen King's writing, not gonna lie. Some of it I think is just waffle. Some of it is just like a bit too much. I think I remember in Cujo there was like three pages dedicated to eating cereal or something like that. So I hope there isn't that much waffling on in this and I hope it's just as good as the film really. You know, usually my kittens are camera holes and for some reason they just haven't been. Ash, Tobu, are you coming over? Are you coming to say hi? Are you going to come and say hi before I finish this intro? This is so antisocial today and I don't know why. Anyway, you'll see them during this vlog, I am pretty sure. And it's really weird as well because when I filmed the Legally Blonde segments of this, I didn't have my cats then and it feels weird now. It feels weird to imagine a time where I didn't have Ash and Tobu. So yeah, that's going to be strange. I don't know how this will look edited, but editing Gav, work your magic. So yeah, these are the three books that I will be reading in this vlog. Hopefully you will stick around to find out what I think of them. But before all of that, make sure that you give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's get into the books. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? Oh my god, oh my god, you guys. <laughs> right, I'm sitting on the floor because there's nowhere else I can possibly film in this very tiny hotel room and get good lighting because the lighting's coming from there. Uh, I'll just, may as well just show you around. Uh, there's the door. There's the, oh, there's the desk. There's the bed. There's the TV. There's the windows to outside. There's the bathroom. That's it. Oh shit. <laughs> so yeah, there's like literally nowhere else I can film. So I'm on the floor where I belong and I am doing a Legally Blonde reading vlog. I'm actually going to see the live version of it, the stage musical, in about an hour. And so I thought I would read the book that the movie and the musical are based on. So Legally Blonde is one of my favourite movies and you know what? It's probably one of my favourite musicals. I absolutely love that show. Never seen it live but I have seen the MTV recording of it and I know pretty much all the words to every song and I just love it. But I've just never seen it live and I'm so excited. I'm going to say it with Elle McNichol. She will be meeting me there and it's only about a 20 minute walk from where I am right now. So no rush, no rush. But I am excited to see Elle. She's looking fabulous. She's looking fabulous, darling. So hot though. Literally, I'm very, very wham. So my experience with Legally Blonde, I absolutely love the film with Reese Witherspoon. And I just rewatched it the other night with my patrons. We did a movie night for Legally Blonde. But one thing I never knew growing up was that Legally Blonde was actually based on a book. And that book is of the same name and it's by Amanda Brown. I haven't heard the best of things about this book quite honestly. A few people I know who have read it have been a little bit let down by it. Now I'm not expecting the movie or the musical in this. I'm currently 148 pages into this so I can tell you that the concept is exactly the same. We do still have Elle and she follows Warner to law school except instead of it being Harvard it's Stanford in the book. And also a fun fact as well, Bruiser is actually called Underdog. That's his actual name, Underdog, which I think is so on the nose. So far, the writing has been fine. It's not amazing. You know what, I don't know when this came out. It must have come out before the film, which came out in 2001. However, there was a reference about it being 2002 in this book because there was a reference to Charlie's Angels, Buffy and Charmed, which I loved. But yeah, it's 2002. It's the time of Buffy, Charmed and Charlie's Angels, Bay Strong. This is set in 2002. But the movie came out in 2001, so the book must have come out earlier than that. So I'm a little bit confused, actually. I didn't connect the dots there. When it got rewritten, you know, things were changed when the movie came out, maybe. And that's why we have some, like, different pop culture references and time frames and stuff. But I, I digress. Anyway, that was just a, a thing that I loved, you know, referencing Charmed and Buffy to my favourite things. And so far, Elle hasn't been as driven as in the movie, either. I feel like she's still very much obsessed with Warner, even though we're 150 pages in, essentially. Vivian isn't called Vivian, she's called Sarah in this, so I do like the fact that they changed that in the movie. Selma Blair as well, oh, amazing. Emmett isn't in this either. There's no Emmett. And I find that so gut-wrenching because I love the development of Elle and Emmett in the movie and the musical. And there's just no Emmett in this, so that's kind of breaking my heart. And Warner, as well, is kind of leading Elon more than he did in the movie. Like, there was a moment, a bit later on, when he asks Elle to kiss him, even though he's with Sarah and engaged to Sarah, and Elle's like, no. So Elle, turn, Elle does turn him down, which is great. Yeah, he seems to lead Elle on more in the book than he did in the movie and, and musical. Elle also makes friends with a girl called Eugenia, or something like that. And yeah, they develop a pretty tight friendship. Paulette is called Josette or 
of that ilk. And she is French in this too. And I don't think that's a very good thing in this. There's a lot of like French stereotypes. And she also seems to just be there as a kind of salon worker and she does Elle's nails and things and she's somebody Elle talks to. But they haven't developed a friendship yet. It all seems to be all about Elle and how much she wants Warner back. So there's been no development there for Paulette slash Josette. And now we've kind of gotten to the murder case and it's not a kind of case for the students of Stanford where they get like an internship for it. Instead, there is like a separate lawyer and the case is sensationalized. You know how Brooke kills her, kills her husband and that case goes to trial and the teacher in Legally Blonde, the movie and musical is like, okay, I need like law students to intern for this case. And in this one, it is just an outside lawyer. The case gets sensationalized and he needs like some kind of apprentice and Elle's audition for it she goes to dinner with this lawyer she says point blank it is not Brooke who killed you know the the husband it was his daughter like she comes out and says that straight away whereas what I love in the movie and the musical is that she comes to that conclusion her own towards the end almost accidentally you know during the trial with that amazing moment where she's you know talking about the perm and stuff so in this she essentially knows it's the daughter straight away so i didn't like it as much in this than i do in the movie musical but again i've still got like another 150 pages to go i mean actually i'm just over halfway through so and i read all of this on the train to london so i'll end up reading this on the way back most likely but yeah it's it's not as exciting. I'm not getting that kind of sense of development from Elle going from, you know, uh, the walking stereotype of a typical blonde and, you know, transforming that into somebody who shouldn't be underestimated. And yeah, she's so far, she kind of slacks during her lessons as well. She still doesn't really want to be there. She has just done some exams and I think she did well in them, but she just doesn't seem to still want to be there. Like she doesn't have that determination and drive that the movie and musical Elle have. So yeah, it's just so far, it's all right. It's not great. It's just all right. So yeah, uh, that's my first update. I'm going to go and say Legally Blonde the Musical now with L, L McNichol. The L to my woods. The L to my Emmett. And that's essentially what I've gone for. I was going to try and wear something pink, but there was just nothing pink that I could possibly have worn that would have looked good. So I've decided to go for an Emmett. I am going as Emmett. <laughs> so I have this kind of like loyally, the kind of look. I'm wearing a black when nobody's dead. <laughs> so yeah, wish me luck. Legally Blonde turned illegally boring by the end of this. I've had to pour myself abandoned schnapps for this update. I did end up finishing this on the train home. Because I read this on the train there and back, I couldn't come in with updates during reading it because I was sitting next to someone the entire time both times. And that would have just been a little bit weird. This just looks like water, to be honest. It's not. But it is such a shame because Legally Blonde, when you think about Legally Blonde, you think glitz and glamour you think pink you think fun and this was the total opposite by the end of it it got honestly so boring yeah it says amanda brown basically blonde on her experiences as a law student at stanford 
So by the midpoint towards the end, we do get a lot more legal jargon and it becomes a lot more, what's the word, clinical? So as Elle is taking on the case, the murder case, it doesn't have that whole bend and snap moment. Like, there's no bend and snaps in this. There's no like bend and snap moment in the courtroom where Elle realizes that the person on the stand, the person who is testifying as a witness against Brooke, is gay and we don't have any of that and the fact that Elle pretty much knows it's the daughter from the get-go kind of eliminated so much of the tension and the kind of build-up towards this trial it was such a boring trial the daughter who turns out to be the murderer does kind of happen the same kind of way you know the daughter has gone for a perm and she takes a shower and you can't get a perm wet and that's how the case gets like blown wide open so that happens pretty much the same but there's just nothing really else that's very redeeming about this it's only towards it's like the very very end when Elle says no to Warner and it, yeah it literally takes her the entire book to kind of move on from him so that when he does come to her and says like I want you back she is like hm, bye so I'm glad that still happens and at the very end we do have Sarah and Elle become you know better friends so I love that I do love that and then we do have Eugenia who is Elle's like best friend in this who wasn't in the movie or the musical like that's a nice friendship Josette doesn't really amount to much unlike again like the film and the musical it just it's it gets really boring. I found myself skimming it because I was that bold. And because I'd just been to see the musical, oh my God, guys, the musical was incredible. I got the program for it. Ugh, I loved it. I loved it so much. And the fact that I had to read this after watching that incredible musical is just, it makes me more mad. It makes me so mad. The musical, it was in an open air theater and I've never been to an open air theater before. So it was actually a lot colder than I was anticipating, obviously, because it was like a nighttime kind of performance and it got darker. And I mean, there was like stage lights and everything. There was a proper stage, but like it got darker, it got colder. It also started raining a little bit at the end of act one. And I was worried that they would cancel act two because if the rain gets too bad, they would have to stop. So I was like, please, please do not progress this rain. And fortunately the rain did like disappear before act two started. So that was good. It was just a fantastic performance. The person who played Elle, Courtney Bowman, oh my lord, she was incredible. The person who played Warner as well was absolutely fucking gorgeous. Same with the person who played Emmett. Oh, there were so many really incredible, gorgeous people in this cast and so diverse too. There are quite a few cast members who are non-binary, which is incredible. And also the person who played Brooke, Lauren Drew, I saw her in Six the Musical earlier this year when it was touring and she played Catherine of Aragon when I went to see it. So the fact that she was Brooke in this, I had no idea until I opened this and I was like, oh my God, Lauren Drew was in this one as well. I just seen her like a couple of months back. So that was really cool. And yeah, it was just an incredible experience. I love the songs from it. It's just so good. I love that musical so much. I'm going to watch the MTV recording of it again, probably tonight. Actually, no, I've got sprints some other time. <laughs> but I'm just obsessed with it. I want to listen to the soundtrack constantly now. I've been listening to Six the Musical soundtrack non-stop since seeing it in January, and now it's Legally Blonde. It's going to be Legally Blonde for the next few months. But yeah, this book does a disservice to what came next with the movie and the musical. Not a great book. I would say skip this, quite honestly. It gets really boring. It's not the L Woods that we know and love. Welcome to Jurassic Park. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous camera angle. Gorgeous, you're looking good, honey. It's nearly 10 p.m. I'm about 200 pages into Jurassic Park. I've got myself a coffee because why not? I'm currently doing sprints with Kayla, Aaron, Gabby, Katie, and Liv. <laughs> it's a good old party over here. And yeah, I have gotten 209 pages in and things are about to happen. If you've seen the movie, it's, uh, there are some things that are just like so similar and I just, I can see it and picture it in my head and it's fantastic. So I was a little bit worried that it might get a little bit too technical, a little bit too wordy, or at least Michael Crichton is trying to build up this world where, you know, you can believe that this could happen. And you know what, in the movies, I feel like I kind of can believe that it could happen. And you know what, I, I believe so even more in the book. So I almost choked on coffee, if it looks like I'm crying. I just almost choked to death. But that is just me. I could cry because I love Jurassic Park so 
much. As I was saying, Michael Crichton is making this world so believable by giving us so many like scientific facts and kind of a little bit of history on dinosaurs and things like that. But like, that's kind of sprinkled throughout like the first 200 pages. Like it's not too much of an info dump or anything like that. It's like so believable. And that's what I'm really enjoying about it. Even during moments where things are maybe a little bit too technical, I'm still like, but I'm digging this. And I am still listening to the audiobook, so I'm reading along, listening to the audiobook, and I'm having such a good time. So this does have Alan in, and it has Elliot, it has Dr. Malcolm, it has Tim, it has Lex, and you know what? They have their personalities still, and I love to say that. Well, Alan, which is the smallest detail, Alan doesn't really like children in the film, but he does in the book. So I kind of find that quite interesting, especially since you get more of an insight into him. So like he's feeling like an even more fully fleshed character. And I feel like this book is kind of like, I know like this came first, but like if I'm watching the film and I can see these characters, this is like an extension to those characters. They feel even better you know you get like so much like backstory you even like on tim so like tim there was a memory and i'm not gonna get into like any big spoilers or anything like that tim has like this memory of going to the museum with his dad and he goes through that and like how he felt and like his relationship with his sister lex but i believe she's called lexi in the film so not really that much of a difference no like i can see the things happening oh there was something this feels a little bit more sinister than the actual film because there was a moment where Malcolm is and Malcolm is pretty much the same honestly like he even says on page 185 life finds a way he even says that he says broadly speaking the ability of the park to control the spread of life forms because the history of evolution is that life escapes all barriers life breaks free life expands to new territories painfully perhaps even dangerously but life finds a way. But as I said, something that was like really sinister is that dinosaurs were never really around humans. So like, how are they gonna respond to us? Like, how will they, you know, respond to us being in front of them? Malcolm says, I'm told large predators such as lions and tigers are not born man-eaters. Isn't that true? These animals must learn somewhere along the way that human beings are easy to kill. Only afterward do they become man-killers. Well, these dinosaurs must be even more reluctant than lions and tigers. After all, they come from a time before human beings, or even large mammals, existed at all. God knows what they think when they see us. So I wonder, have they learned somewhere along the line that humans are easy to kill? And I just feel like the implications of that is just so bone chilling and it makes me so scared <laughs> but we kind of start off with i feel like this is a bit of an amalgamation of the lost world jurassic park the movie because we start off with kind of like little like lizard or like reptile attacks that are happening kind of like at the start of the lost world jurassic park when the little girl gets bitten by lots of these little dinosaurs so this book kind of starts in that way of like reports of attacks and then you know the whole jurassic park thing with hammond and getting alan and ellie to the park and stuff like that's pretty much kind of similar but you know they are in the park now so i've pause at a moment where Nedry has disabled like the electric fences and stuff and he's stolen the like DNA and stuff so he's going to try and get away with it so he's just done that we haven't had like the T-Rex attack or anything just yet I feel like that's coming or at least something similar to that I don't know if it's exactly similar to the film Alan and the kids and everyone are like in the park and something's about to happen so I'm just so excited I've really paused it at a really good bit I think so I'm going to continue reading now that I'm on these sprints and yeah I'm just I'm loving this so far honestly it just oh, I was so worried because Jurassic Park is my favorite movie along with Titanic so I just I don't know I feel protective of it a little bit and I just felt like this couldn't touch it even though it came first but that's such a bad take like this is just so good so yeah I'm so glad I'm reading this See? I'm excited for lots to happen oh my god it's just gonna go balls to the wall crazy now I can feel it
Okay, so today did not go how I intended it to go. I had so much fun last night and no regrets. After last night's reading sprints, I decided I wanted to do something really random. And Katie was also doing some after party reading sprints. So I ended up doing those with Katie and Kayla. And they, they were great and everything. And then I looked out of the window, you know, around about like 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was like 4.30 a.m. when we finished the live show. And yeah, the sun was coming up. It was actually really light. The birds were singing and it was definitely time to go to bed. So I don't think I got to sleep until like 5 a.m., maybe a little bit after that. And then I slept through my alarm at 10 and didn't wake up until midday. So I was like, shit, shit. Because I wanted to also film and edit the video so that I had it scheduled and everything. So I did manage to do that, but it made me a little bit more delayed and finished in Jurassic Park. But I have finished this now, and I was gonna do an update on it when I finished it three hours ago, but then my cats decided that they wanted to sleep on me. And I couldn't move. I couldn't move for two hours. So it's nearly midnight now. It's like 11.20 p.m. And part of me is hoping that Ali from Hardback Holder is going to start streaming tonight on Twitch. She usually does on a Tuesday. So I have managed to finish this. I loved it. I thought it was awesome. It was wicked. It Honestly, uh, I could say certain scenes from the film, but like in a different way. I feel like, like this went a bit more bonkers. This one had a little bit more teeth and a bit more action and a bit more death. And it was just... Oh God, it was wonderful. Not the death per se, but just how much I enjoyed this. I'm not going to like specific scenes and things in case you haven't seen the film or read this book and you want to, so no spoilers from me. But yeah, I felt a little bit of like Jurassic Park 3 in this as well. And definitely it's like The Lost World, but more so the first Jurassic Park film. I feel like the trilogy, the original Jurassic Park trilogy took quite a bit from this. But even then, this suspense, the suspense was great. And I was really scared for the characters. I didn't know if certain characters would make it. I didn't know if the book would change certain fates. And it still kept me scared. There was just more and more scenes that I feel like could have been so amazing in the film that weren't used. And there's just so much material here, like so much material. It's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. It's gonna be one of my favorite books of the year, I think. Definite five star. I don't know why it took me so long to read it. Honestly, I'm so excited to read The Lost World Jurassic Park now. There is a sequel to the book. And yeah, I'm excited to see how that turns out. I can't remember if people said that's not as good as this one, but even so, I don't care. I want to read it. So I need to get on that and get it. But now I've read this one. Oh God, this is definitely like the best of the vlog. Definitely better than Legally Blonde, 100%. Definitely better than Legally Blonde. Love the characters, love the scenes, love the tension, loved everything about it. It did start to go on a little bit long, but I overlooked that because the overall package, the overall experience was wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So five stars. So that means next I am reading The Shining by Stephen King, a very different book to Jurassic Park and a very, very different book to Legally Blonde. Here's Johnny. <laughs> I haven't read a Stephen King book in a while, so I am looking forward to diving back in. I believe I've already told you what this is about. Just gonna dive straight into it, I think. Actually, maybe not tonight. Maybe not tonight. There is something ridiculous I want to continue filming tonight. So I might do that. I'll see if Ali is streaming on Twitch. Because if she is, then the rest of my night is a write-off. But I'm planning on going to a cafe tomorrow and reading this. I'm only gonna leave the house for like two hours because I don't want to leave my kittens for too long, even though, you know, I do go to work and stuff. So I have left them for a lot longer than two hours. But you know, I just, I don't want to leave them for too long when I don't have to. Yeah, I want to go to a coffee shop, I think. I need to do something a bit more social. So I hope this is as good as Jurassic Park. I doubt it'll be anywhere near it, to be honest. And this is actually the only film I haven't watched recently. I did rewatch Legally Blonde and Jurassic Park with my patrons recently, but I haven't watched The Shining in a couple of years. So I might watch The Shining too at some point this week. It's gonna happen. Okay, yesterday was an absolute write-off. I, right, I was supposed to start reading The Shining. I was supposed to, and I was also supposed to get out. I was supposed to get out the house. And I keep watching people's booktube videos, people's vlogs on booktube, and people are going outside. And I'm like, what does that feel? How do you do that? Like, I can go outside for work. Like, that's absolutely fine. I can do that because I'm going to get paid to do that. But I've tried so hard to go out so I can go to a coffee shop. It's like one of my favorite things to do, but I just haven't been able to do that. And plus, I don't want to leave my babies. I don't want to leave them. But today I'm forcing myself out. I'm forcing myself out. Yesterday was a write-off. I filmed a really silly 
my heart will go on parity yesterday. Well, actually, I've been working on it since like Monday night slash Tuesday morning. So yeah, that took a lot of time. And so it made me delayed on this. But after doing that, I got like a really big headache. So I just like lay down for the rest of the day. And I just didn't do anything. I didn't even read. I was watching a lot of sprints. Actually, a few people were sprinting yesterday. So I was watching some sprints and just not reading. I was just there for the vibes. But today I don't have a headache. The sun is shining so brightly and I really need to start this. Also, I do have a local coffee shop that I discovered a few months ago and then the second time I went I'm not gonna get any workers in trouble but if you are one of my like close friends on Instagram you'll know <laughs> you'll know what happened last time I was there so I've been really worried about going back but I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back today hopefully nothing happens I'm just really excited I'm really excited because I love that place so even though I've only been twice I love that place so I'm gonna bring the shining and I just want to make a start I want to make a start like I really want to get it finished maybe tomorrow I still have a couple of days off work so that shouldn't be a problem and yeah I only have like two more books on my June TBR that I need to read so I can do them next week. So I, I could do it. I could do it. I could do it. I also have the audiobook for The Shining as well ready to go so that when I'm on my walk down I can start it. Or I might listen to music. No, I want to listen to music. Yeah, I want to listen to music on the way down, I think. I love listening to music when I go between places just to get me in the mood, you know, just to get me like all happy and excited. I haven't even had breakfast yet. I just made myself a coffee this morning, watched Kayla's latest video, played with my kittens, and yeah, now I'm gonna head off, get something to eat when I'm there, because they do have some really nice food too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna shut up, because the longer I talk, the more likely it is that maybe there's not gonna be a table. And I want a table, I'm walking there. <laughs> Daddy's just off to the cafe for just a couple hours, okay? Just a couple hours, I'll be right back. Got plenty of food? Yeah, I got plenty of food. You're gonna play together, aren't you? Oh, I can't leave yous. I can't leave yous. <laughs> Oh, so you've got the place a fucking mess. See, you'll be fine. You've got each other. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're just so beautiful. You're so beautiful, yes. You're just so beautiful. Oh, you're so beautiful. It's Friday night and you are beautiful. Is magic. I am so lucky to be with you. to get out and about again. I somehow managed to read 203 pages of The Shining and then like two and a half hours I was at the cafe. I was listening to the audiobook of course. I listened at 2.5 times speed but I was also reading along physically and my eyes do read a little bit faster than the audiobook so I feel like 2.5 speed isn't that much really in the grand scheme of things. It was just so nice to be back at the cafe as well. So, so nice. I love the falafel and mango chutney paninis that they do. Every single time I go, I have one. I still have yet to try anything else off the menu, but that one, oh, so good. So with The Shining, it's been all right so far. It has been all right. Not a whole great deal has happened, but honestly, I feel like we could have done without like the first 65 pages. Like part one, this is split into parts. Part one was kind of a lot of character stuff. And you know what Stephen King is like. 
you know, the only thing I really remember from part one is the fact that Jack's seed was drying on Wendy's thighs and the fact a five-year-old knows about sex. Other than that, the first chapter was about Jack getting the job at the Overlook Hotel. And then after that, it's like 60 pages of, quite frankly, a lot of nothing. And then part two starts off with them getting to the Overlook Hotel. So that's when things have really started to kind of pick up a little bit. It really hasn't. It's been very subtle. Mainly the horror is coming from Danny, the five-year-old kid the son, Danny and his kind of like visions, he's seeing Red Room and things like that. So it's mainly due to him. There have been stories about things that have happened at the Overlook Hotel, which piques my interest, but I have seen the film, so it's like not surprising or anything. I feel like I know where the story goes, but also the book could still surprise me because, you know, movie adaptations from books can be very different. And again, I haven't watched the film in years, so I need to rewatch it. Maybe when I finish this, I should finish this today. I mean, the sun is still shining. The book's only 497 pages long, so I'm 200 pages in. So I'm nearly halfway there. I feel like I could still bash it out. I did accidentally get like food on the book as well. I hate when that happens. But so far, like, I'm not hating it. Now, I have read Stephen King before. This isn't my first. I've read Carrie. I thought that was good. That was my first Stephen King, actually. And I read Gerald's Game. I like that. I read Pet Cemetery. That's probably my favourite Stephen King. I've read Cujo, which I liked. I read... I'm sure I've read more than that. I read Rose Madder, which I liked. You know what? I have actually liked a few of Stephen King's books. What else? I, I've read Misery, which again, I liked. Oh, and I, I read The Stand. That one I didn't like as much because it was just fucking huge. But this one's fine so far. Absolutely fine. I don't like the character of Jack. He is abusive. Even before I know what, like the madness sets in at the Overlook Hotel and the kind of elements that come from that. Even before all of that, he's an abusive father and he's just not very likable, which, you know, doesn't make or break a book for me. But like, Character-wise, I'm not really liking anyone a whole great deal. And Jack is starting to get a little bit more aggressive now at the Overlook Hotel, so I think this is where it might ramp up in action, in tension. Because yeah, it's been very subtle so far, which is fine, honestly, it's fine. But yeah, I'm hoping it'll pick up soon. But I am determined to finish tonight. Not even midnight and I managed to finish The Shining. So 9% of you on my Instagram stories who said, no, I can't finish The Shining by tonight, you voted wrong. And Tobu, dear mind, dear mind, playing with my wires. <laughs> So thank you to the 91% who said yes, you are right. You were right. At least 91% as of recording this video. And it was good. Like, it is a good book. I think 
I still prefer some of the other Stephen King books that I've read. So like Pet Cemetery, I think is probably still my favourite. I liked Misery. So this is like definitely in my top 10 Stephen King books. Granted, I think I've only read like six or seven, but like, it's still up there. The story continued to be very good. Like Stephen King is a very good writer. Also, if you hear a lot of noise, it's because my cats are running around. They're crazy. You're crazy. You crazy girl. And the amount of times the N-word in this book is used is so unnecessary. Stephen King does a good job of depicting real characters and some of like the dregs of society and you can believe that they're the dregs of society. But was there any need in the amount of times the N-word was used? Like really? Every single time it was used, it just kept removing me from the story. I'm just like, again? A fucking again? Everywhere else as well, like, you fall into the trap of Stephen King, don't you? Very, very wordy. If you just strip this down to just the plot, this could have been 300 pages shorter. And I was listening to the audiobook as well. I was lying down with my babies. They're just over there play fighting right now. Oh, he's so beautiful. I was listening to the audiobook and I could phase out for like five minutes and then come back to the audiobook and not be lost because it's just a whole lot of this. I didn't want to give this like 3.5 stars. I do really love the idea of the Overlook Hotel. I really do like the progression of the character of Jack and like how crazy he gets um, and how Boys, don't be too rough. Ah, my laptop. <laughs> it really is a great documentation into the descent of a character and I feel like that was done really well. The Overlook Hotel was very sinister and yeah, it's just like so many really scary things. Well, not scary, I don't think I was ever scared. But I was tense, like I was quite tense, even though I kind of knew the overall direction of the plot and the story, I was still quite tense. 3.5 is what I'm settling at. I'm not attributing the fact that I've seen the movie first that made me not like this as much. I mean, the thing is though, I need to rewatch the movie stat. I was sure I had the Blu-ray of it, but I can't find it in order for me to really like compare it. And even in the movie, there are like slow moving bits and stuff like that, but like from what I remember, but it was still like interesting as a whole and quite scary and you know there are some things in the movie that are just like so iconic now but Stephen King can write he can write just like half the time I just wish he would shut up oh fuck Katie and Liv back from the sprints I need to mute their asses I still want to read more Stephen King like the, at least the ones I already own I do still have a few Stephen King books that I need to read that I already own I don't want him to talk so much I just want him to get on with the story but I know he's like so fantastic at character work like he really is and backstory and all of that too so I am conflicted because sometimes it's necessary to make the character seem believable and real but I have a limit I do, I have a limit. And I just hope the next Stephen King book I read will be a lot more exciting, quite honestly. Like, I'm not saying this is a bad book, and honestly, I know there are a lot of Stephen King fans who absolutely love The Shining, but I wish it had just, like, picked up a bit more. So yeah, that was, oh, I should get the books. All right, I need to go in the library and get the other books so I can wrap up the vlog. Boys, don't touch the laptop, don't touch the camera, okay? This is dangerous. No, Ash, don't even think about it. So these are the three books I read in this vlog and I really loved one of them. Like I think this is like a new favorite of mine. The other two, I mean, 3.5. I think this is my second favorite from this vlog. Legally Blonde is definitely my least favorite. I can't remember what I rated it, but I just know this is definitely my least favorite in this vlog. It just wasn't as fun or as good as I was hoping. So yeah, no, off the laptop. Off the laptop. <laughs> Toby, you're so naughty. You're so naughty. Yes, you are. Oh, what was I saying? Toby, you're so distracting. I'm sure I was saying something important and you interrupted us and I forgot. I forgot what I was saying. Why did you do that? Why? As adaptations, I do feel like the Legally Blonde movie did a better... I think maybe the Shining movie did a better as well. I don't know if that is like a really controversial take. And, oh my gosh... I think the movie still has a bigger place in my heart than the book, of course, because the book is like brand new to me. So I'm gonna say the movie also was better than the book. So if anything, all I've discovered is that I've read three books that inspired movies that are my favorites and the movies were all better. I think, I think definitely these two 
the jury's still out on this one but anyway that was my vlog thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below let me know if you've read any of these books if you love the movies as well let me know everything a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my content always and being incredible people i have a link to my patreon and all the social media links for me and my channel down in the description box too if you want to check that out but i hope i will see you in the next video bye